Newfoundland Sportsman with White Blackwood and Paul Amundsen. On today's show, Dwight and Paul visit the Terranova River Salmon Enhancement Project and see firsthand the efforts being taken to revitalize the salmon stocks in this river. They'll also travel just outside of Terranova National Park on horseback with one of the most popular trail rides in Newfoundland. Probably gonna be the best one this morning, is it? Yeah, that's for our salmon. I think about a 45 minute walk. Salmon fishing is a, a game of patience. But I mean, who couldn't spend time on a river like this in the morning? I mean, you can always come out in the morning. You can always find a spot in the river where you can be alone. It's just fantastic. I mean, the surroundings are beautiful, so relaxing. And then, of course, you get the reward when you hook a salmon as well. So it really works well. I know it's difficult sometimes when you're, you're planning your trips and whatnot. DFO will have to close some of the rivers, but they have to work on an ongoing basis. Water levels, temperature. So they sometimes have to close the rivers and it's difficult to make your plans, but there's always rivers around that you can fish and you have to preserve them. It's for moments like these that we have to preserve and enhance our salmon stocks. So I want you to meet Fred Holloway, who's a project manager with the Terranova River Salmon Enhancement Project. Hi, Fred. Welcome to the show. Hi, Dwight. Hi, Fred. Hi, Paul. Fred, what stage of the project are we in right now? This is the Lake Cage rearing site, and we, we rear uh, juvenile salmon here all summer. So now you incubate the eggs back into the Terranova base, we'll call it. Yes, we, we incubate the eggs back in Terranova, 
and uh, uh, when they come out in the spring, we, we transfer them up here and we raise them here all summer. How many eggs would you incubate? Uh, we incubate a set 97,000 and we've got 22,000 here now. Your success rate for incubating eggs to the fry stage is pretty amazing. Yes, uh, our, our survival rate is 94% versus 10 to 20% out in the wild. So uh, with 8,000 eggs, we would be producing 7,000 uh, juveniles. And that would be nine times as many as the, the, the wild can produce. So evidently enough, we'd be producing nine times as many adults coming back. Now also, where you have the fry in captivity here and they're being fed better, they're bigger, does that speed up their life cycle? Yes, uh, because we've, we've raised those to a, a one year uh, size, that uh, they're much greater, they're much bigger size now going out into nature. So they will be uh, smultifying a year earlier, and uh, that means that they'll come back a year earlier as adults. So we've got more fish going out, and the fish returning quicker to breed. Yes. Excellent. Yep. Can we uh, take a look at some? Sure. Yep. Okay, I'll give you a hand with the list. You, uh... I'm looking forward to seeing these little fellas. <clears throat> well, there's... Oh, gee, look. Fred, you've got a lot of fry in this pen. How many figures in this pen? There's 12,000 in this one, uh, Dwight. What about this one here? How many you have in There's that one? There's 10,000 in that one. These little guys were born back to spring sometimes, so obviously when they were born, they weren't very big. You know, they've grown considerably since then, in, in, in the few months since they've been born. How much do these fish gain in weight a day? Uh, they, they gain, they double their weight every two weeks. Every two weeks. Yep. Yeah. And they're fine size now, so you are going to release these in early fall? Uh, yes, the first week in October we'll be releasing them into uh, into the, the ponds up in the Edwater. These fish, they feed well, they must also get some nutrients or plankton from the freshwater pond that they're in, do they? Yeah, they get some, uh, and that prepares them for the wall, really, and, and this pond, uh, it seems like they got a nice bit there a few times during the summer. Can we get a little bit of a closer look at these guys? Yeah, I can dip some up for you to have a look. Any active little fellas, I tell you. Well, yeah, they're not. They don't like your net too much, but you know, if you could do that with a salmon rod in a few years' time, man, are they ever little wild creatures. That's usually the size Paul catches. It's amazing how much these little salmon grow when they go out to sea. They'll go out as a smolt of probably six or seven inches. They'll stay out anywhere from a year to two to three years. And when they come back, even after one year, they can weigh as much as three or four pounds. You know, if they come back after two years feeding at sea, they can be double that again. Now, nature has a fantastic way of making these guys grow. Well, they grow a lot bigger now with these guys working with them. But Fred has some larger fish, some mature fish, down in some other cages. I'd love to go down and see those. Yeah, we'll have to uh, go and take a look. That's what I'm looking forward to. Can I have a little flick one down there? No, I'm sorry you can't. <laughs> you can't catch <laughs> For the outdoor enthusiast, Newfoundland and Labrador offers excitement second to none. And the Newfoundland Sportsman magazine brings that excitement home to you. Subscribe now and begin enjoying interesting and informative features with exceptional photography, focusing on every aspect of our great outdoors. Order now and receive six issues a year for the low price of only $21.35. Or subscribe for two years and get 12 issues for only $38.04 and save 25% off newsstand prices. The Newfoundland Sportsman Magazine, outdoors at its best. Yeah. That's a uh, fish that's still lying there. Look at the fish. Look at size that one, look. Man, oh man, Freddie, you got them all sizes here? You got yes. them from about two pounds, what, to over 10, 12? Well, they're there 10 for sure. Man, how, oh man. how many do you have in this tank right now? You got uh, 304 there now. Whoa. Folks, you've got to appreciate what we're showing you here. I mean, who in the right mind wouldn't want to cast a fly in the middle of these salmon? It's just unbelievable. Can you imagine what kind of action you'd have in this little box? <laughs> They'll be tail dancing from wall to wall. They're going crazy. 
This is nice. Fred, have I already asked you if I could have a flick or two here? This, uh, is, this is driving me nuts. I'm, I don't know how much more this I can take. No, you can't have a flick. The season's closed, and it's off limits to anything but, uh, but looking and taking uh, pictures. I caught a five pounder not very long ago, and uh, some of these fish here, you know, gotta go over 10 pounds. I can only imagine why one of those would be like at the end of the line. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some nice, uh, nice fish there. There's a 10 pounder for sure. But uh, is a big one. Huh? What proof do we have that you caught a five pounder? Oh, he's on oh, TV. He's on TV. <laughs> That's yeah, right. You had to watch our program. But <laughs> well, what we'll do, if you're real good, we'll let you uh, handle them, and you can help. Uh, what do you call it? Stripping? Yeah. You notice, you notice these salmon. It's not hard to tell they've been in the fresh water for some period of time. The silver is virtually all gone, and they're, you know, they're they're a much blacker shade now than than they would have been had they been in the much water darker, only a few. Yeah. yeah. That's few a days. that's a process of uh, maturing, and and it's. It's, a, tra it's a, a sign that they are starting to mature. Uh, mature in the sense of uh, spawning, you mean? Yes, getting close to the spawning, spawning cycle. And uh, it's only another, uh, well, a month and a half, and they'll be uh, completely ready. Now, of course, this is pretty good because you basically track them, lay them here. You don't have to feed them. You don't have to do anything. I mean, they don't feed when they're in right. uh, fresh water. No. So there's no maintenance at all, really. No, it's just a matter of providing security. You don't put fish in the holding without <laughs> providing security. Do you have and, any bears uh, coming here? Uh, Four-legged bears and two-legged yeah. bears as well. <laughs> but uh, we, we provide 24-hour security on site, and uh, there's two people on, on site at all times. Well, yes, I guess to. you have to, yeah. You know the price of salmon these days, you're paying four fifty-five dollars a pound, yeah. and you've got 304 fish here. That's quite a few pounds of salmon. Yeah, there's quite a few pounds of salmon there now, for sure. Now, there's how many fish coming up through this river? Uh, this year, we're open to uh, go close to the 1,600 uh, fish mark. Okay. Uh, we're over the 1,500 now. So, uh, but that, uh, in relation to when we started 10 years ago, that's that's uh, twice as many as we uh, started out with. In the next few years, you're going to see double that and double that again. What is your uh, projection for this river? Uh, about 20,000 fish coming up through the fishway. In what period of time? In 20 years' time. 20 years' time. Yep. Well, I mean, uh, well, I like to be around 20 years' time, having a flick here, you know, and catching some of these guys. You know, if it, if it increases by that amount, you can imagine that it's going to increase not only in quantity, but also in size. You know, you're yes. going to be getting salmon up here that are going to run 15, 20 pounds, same as it did back in the early 70s. Yeah, the, the percentage of large fish is uh, starting to increase. We can see a difference in it now. I've seen that in a lot of rivers that I fished this summer. You know, you talk to the anglers on the rivers and said, look, we're getting more salmon, and it seems that the salmon are getting bigger. Yeah. Well, I mean, this year is the first year they've had uh, uh, the fall fishery on the Gander River. Yeah. The yes. numbers are climbing. Uh, I think it was only five years ago they only had six or seven thousand uh, salmon going up. Now they're up into twenty-five thousand. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's all paying off. Well, thanks very much, Fred. This has been a great day. It's been a real eye opener. This is an enhancement project you got here. There should be a lot more of them on the go. I know you're not going to let me have a flick here, so I think I'm going to have to go somewhere else. We knew it was coming, but it's something. No man wants to face alone. But it's coming for us. Partner and I weren't ready to give it up without a fight. You know the feeling when it's getting closer. So what are you going to do? Well, buddy, it's the end of fishing season. So we packed up the rods and said goodbye to fishing for another season and went in search of new adventure. Well, we're going on a two-hour ride now from Splash Putt Resort here on Trans-Canada. We're going to ride on a woods road that parallels Terranova Park into a ridge about 10 kilometers in. Some nice ways in. Good yeah. scenery along the way? Oh, beautiful, yeah. Might see some wildlife, like moose and that. Uh, it's two hours, and uh, we stop halfway for a stretch break, just in case you right. get a little tender or something. I very well may have settled, so as I tell you. No. Well, well, Dwight's never fallen out of a boat, so I guess he won't fall off the horse. I don't uh, know. Well, I hope not.
Right. Just put the way in the bulb foot there. Heel down. How's that feel? So when you're going to haul the reins back, when you, if you want to stop, just call the roll. Pull the reins straight back where you saw Okay, just drop your reins and stop. Okay. Okay. We're ready, so we're ready to go. Do you uh, pick out a pick or a breed of horse for, for an excursion like we're on now? Uh, well, when we went looking for them, we went to New Brunswick in about 18 off uh, Royal Roads Academy up there, and uh, we tried to get quarter horses, registered uh, quarter horses, and uh, they're known for their quiet dispositions and easy rides, like their smooth ride. Mm -hmm. uh, I so beg to differ. Yeah, well, <laughs> I did a little bit of bumping. Well, yeah, no, I'm not kidding. Yeah, well, I don't think you've got your seat yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. I you got your rhythm. You as soon get as you rhythm. get your seat. But for the most part, uh, but there's other things you look for in a trail horse, too. You try and get one that's... Uh, mature so we, all our horses are over uh, eight years old except for one and the oldest I think is around 20. We thought he was 15 but he ended up being 20. Is that right? <laughs> but he's there so you look for quiet disposition and uh, and so they get along with people. The local saddle horses are increasing in the province. There's a great interest in it. The Newfoundland Trail Riders Association based in St. John's have over 65 members. And that's an indication alone, you know, that is... Uh, but I mean, I can see the popularity of it, because I mean, just drive, riding them up today is just... Like you say, once you get your, your, your rhythm with them, mm -hmm. uh, it's just excellent. The best well. way to enjoy a horse is to, uh, to, to ride it out on the trail on them doors like we are today. Oh, yeah. After that well-needed break, we headed back out on the trail. Paul continued to work on his so-called rhythm, and boy, I was certainly working on mine. Accommodations were rustic and comfortable, and with the eight or nine tents that were available to us, it gave you a real western flavor. After a couple of hours in the fresh air, we really worked up an appetite. And while the cooks were preparing our meal, John was busy with the horses. On a slow and relaxing trip like this, it's really nice to get an opportunity to go out and meet the rest of the people on the trip. We met a number of people from all over the province, and some from even outside the province. For more information on trail riding near Terranova National Park, contact Right Away Trails. Call now and book your western evening adventure. Man, that was a great trip, wasn't it? Oh, I really enjoyed it. It was different for me. Oh, yes. I've always had my sea legs, but it took me a while to get my horse legs, and when it did, it made the ride that much easier. It is. It really is different. I mean, you're going through nature, and you're on an animal. I mean, how often you get that opportunity, and it gives you time to ponder, and it really brings you back to nature. I mean, this whole trip, really, is basic. You're staying in tents. You're riding animals. You're going through the countryside, some beautiful scenery. Mm, and, gorgeous. And then you're having a, an old-fashioned western barbecue, uh, sing a song, and fire. Just fantastic, wasn't it? The boys are going to rustle up some steaks there, Pilgrim. He guarantees me, he says, that it'll be a barbecue you won't forget. Eh? But, I'm beginning uh, to feel like John Wayne. It does too. It gives you some sense of, of, of the western days. I must say, it really has a, a feel to it like that. Uh, an excellent trip I recommend to anybody, I must say. And the animals, I mean, they're just beautiful. I really like that Palomino over there. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are nice, really nice ones. Aren't they? Nice colors. Yeah. There's a grey one here too, down here. Look. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> well, an old cowpoke went riding out one cold and windy day. On a ridge he rested as he went along his way. When all at once a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw plowing through the ragged skies and up the cloudy draw. The 
brands was still on fire and their hose was made of steel. Horns was black and shiny and their hot breath he could feel. Well, a bold affair went through them as they thundered through the sky cause he saw the riders coming hard and he heard their mournful cry. Oh, yippee I Faces gaunt, their eyes were glazed, their shirts all soaked with sweat. They're riding hard to catch that herd, but they ain't caught him yet. Cause you gotta ride forever on that range up in the sky, on horses snorting fire. Hear their mournful cry. As the riders loped on by him, well, he heard one call his name. Want to save your soul from hell or riding on this range? Then, cowboy, change your ways the day or with us you will ride. Trying to catch the devil's herd across these endless skies. Oh, yippee, I hate. Too, I tell you. Yeah. Shore beats the practice wing in your backyard. And